Welcome to Salem Lutheran Church, Peoria, Illinois. I'm Craig Swenson, pastor at Salem. This is the 16th annual Pray for the Cure that is held at Salem. It was to be held in April of this year, but due to the coronavirus pandemic, it had been postponed till October. And because of continued concerns about gathering together, it has now become a virtual event. So I encourage you to uh, listen to the words of those who are participating, the readers and the hymn and the songs and, and things that are always uh, appreciated during this Pray for the Cure event. And it's my privilege to welcome you and to begin with these words. Our Lord Jesus healed many as a sign of the reign of God that has come near and set the disciples to continue his work of healing with prayer, laying on of hands and anointing. In the name of Christ, the greatest healer and reconciler of the world, you are now entrusted to God as participants for all in need of healing. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gifts of life on earth for our human bodies and all that you have created. By the wounds of your Son, we are healed. Bring your saving health to all people. Your Son, Jesus, brought the gift of healing and wholeness. Bring your healing presence now to all who call upon you and who seek your complete and sustained healing, body, mind, and spirit, and to all who are in any distress. You are the source of human knowledge. Give skill and wisdom and compassion to all who provide medical care. Give gentleness and courage to family members, friends, and caregivers of all who are suffering. God of great abundance, with your presence, sustain all for whom we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As part of the Pray for the Cure event, at its conclusion, people are invited to come forward where there is an opportunity for personal laying on of hands and prayer. I'll offer that for you at this time. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servants. Drive away all sickness of body and spirit Make whole that which is broken. Deliver these people from the power of evil and preserve them in true faith to share in the power of Christ's resurrection and to serve you with all the saints now and forevermore. Amen. Now may Almighty God, who is strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and on earth bow and obey, be now and ever for evermore your sure defense. Help you to know that the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. May the peace and healing of Christ and his presence abide with you and be among you and stir within your hearts. Amen. Breast cancer has invaded my body, but I, it need not invade my spirit. There may be scars on my chest, but there need not be scars on my heart. As, As survivors, survivors, we choose hope, hope after loss. We choose to look at what we can do now that tragedy has invaded our lives. We choose hope after loss. We take a misfortune of life and change it into something that produces personal growth and somehow benefits others. We acknowledge our loss and nurse our pain but we move on to make the tragedy a source of motivation for a new direction in our lives. As the survivors, we remember that even horrible losses can be transformed into learning. We decide, even in the midst of our pain, to learn from our loss. We move from the question of why me to now that this has happened, what shall I do with it? We find people who will help, friends, family, peers, support groups, role models, professional helpers, 
neighbors, authors, treatment programs, women or prosthetic makers, all who give good advice of various and sundry sorts to make our journey a little easier. We refuse to carry along old resentments, grievances, or remembered injustices because we know that harbor memories grow increasingly heavy and slow our journey to recovery. As survivors, we decide not to waste our lives by permanently losing ourselves in sorrow, defeat, anger, fear, or guilt. We lighten our recovery load by unloading these energy drainers. As survivors, we go beyond brokenness and overcome tragedy and hurts because we do things differently during our grief and healing process. Therefore, we carefully measure our thoughts and actions to keep them positive, making this part of our treatment plan for recovery. We accept responsibility for our own lives. We refuse to blame others, God, or fate for our misfortunes. As survivors, we do not allow our misfortune to be an excuse for personal unhappiness. Instead, we take action to transform the unfortunate into a catalyst for good. We change whatever impairs us into a tool for personal growth. Whatever the goal we are pursuing, no matter how rugged the climb, we're certain to get there by trying our best and taking one day at a time. Forever is hard to imagine. The future may seem far away, but every new dawn brings a wonderful chance to do what we can on that day.
procedures. God's got this. Probably the only fear I had was telling my kids, who were 18 and 20 at the time, and wondering how they might react. I had a mastectomy on February 26, 2018, and I continued to rely on the words, God's got this, as I went to the hospital. I recall that I felt an unusual sense of calm when we were at the hospital and before I went in for surgery. One more time before anesthesia started, I reminded myself, God's got this. As I reflect back on my experience, I can't help but wonder how anybody could get through this type of situation without knowing the Lord and fully trusting that he will handle anything that life presents. Without those comforting three words, God's got this, there is no way I could have gotten through this experience. Most, if not all of the attendees who pray for the cure have a relationship with the Lord. But through our network of other survivors and those currently going through treatment, we may know others who do not. What an incredible opportunity for each of us to share the good news about God. I challenge each of you to reach out to another survivor or person going through treatment and make sure they know that God's got this for them. Those might just be the comforting words they need to hear to get through this challenging journey. Take time to pray with them. While I knew that God had everything under control, my prayer warriors meant the world to me during my journey. Let's take a moment to pray for all of you as prayer warriors or as survivors. Dear Lord, we thank you for our prayer community participating in Pray for the Cure. Be with each of us as we go out to our mission fields to do your work. Help us to reach out to those who may not know you to share the good news about you and to lift up other survivors to your healing care. Lord, we know that you've got each of us in your care, and for that, we thank you. Continue to grant healing to those currently going through treatment, and grant them comfort in knowing that you've got this covered for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name is Judy Hendricks, and I am a 35-year survivor. I was diagnosed 
with breast cancer in 1985. And at that particular time, that was a very bitter pill to swallow. My children were still very young. My husband was running up and down the highway coaching, teaching, and uh, it seemed that it was just not a good time for any interruptions in my life. I just received a promotion and I was just um, making the adjustments in those changes in my life. And so that was a bitter pill to swallow. So like the children of Israel, it gave me great pleasure to testify the goodness, the good things of God. But when this bitter pill appeared, I could not swallow it. It was bitter. And just as the children of Israel spent three days in the wilderness without water, it was hard to rely on the faithfulness of God, believing God even as they met and as they gathered around Mara, when they were, after three days, they could not drink the water because the water was very bitter. And I felt that this was a bitter time in my life. So all of us at times in our lives will be faced with a bitter pill to swallow. We'll face our personal Goliath, giants that seem to be insurmountable at the time. Just as the children of Israel approached the waters of Mara, the water was bitter, so bitter that they could not drink it. The people were in distress. I was in distress. I was frustrated. I felt like, why me, Lord? Could I trust and rely upon God when I received my diagnosis of cancer? Here I was at my Mara, at a place of bitter waters, bitter waters indeed. Could I trust God for his provisions for me as I faced these bitter waters? Could he make my bitter waters sweet? Even as he showed Moses a tree, which he said Moses cast it into the waters, and when Moses cast the tree into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Would my bitter waters be made sweet? God doesn't promise us that the days of our lives will be free from struggle, but he does promise us that he will be with us through our struggles. Breast cancer is not a respecter of persons. It does not discriminate. My first reaction to this cancer diagnosis was expressed in my mini book about five years into my journey, a mini book that I called Bitter Waters. The first chapter, my name is Judy, not Joe. I felt like I needed to quickly remind Father God that my name is Judy, not Job. So words are, that are mediums of expression and cancer or carcinoma conjured up gruesome images and caused me to immediately think about my own mortality, to look at my children, to look at my husband, to look at the future that I had already planned for our family. I was immediately reminded of people who I had known who had died of cancer. People in my family, people who I had known, will I live or die? So cancer was not just a word to me. The first person that I called after my husband and I received the diagnosis was my mother. Then I called my sister, Evangelist Maddie Pearl Dawson, who was then at a revival in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, she and her husband. When I called her and I said, Peaches, they say I have cancer. 
She simply responded to the news. She said, Judy, cancer is just a word. I thought, what? Cancer is just a word? Over the next few months, I became very familiar with that word. I began to bargain with God, if it be possible, you know, like Jesus did, if it be possible, let this cup, let it pass from me. And as I reflected on many things that I had gone through, I had to come to the conclusion, nevertheless, nevertheless, life's calamities and various adversities had already taken its toll. And I remembered the excruciating pain of the loss of my baby daughter. I remembered some other instances and I simply yet was able to say, Father God, nevertheless. So faith in God was the basis of my journey. That's where I started. That's where I had to move step by step. My faith in God, everything that I knew, everything that I had taught, everything that had been taught to me came to mind as I began to face the C word. After many prayers, after intercessors prayed for me, after fastings and prayer, after many were standing in the gap for me, I desperately wanted and expected God to say, poof, and the cancer would be gone. An instant miracle. Oh, that's what I would prefer. The prayer of faith that saves the sick and the cancer would simply be gone. But that was not my journey. Father God said, step by step, you will make this journey. Not to my will, but thy will be done, was my answer. So choices, 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 whether to fight or whether to give up or give in. I chose to fight. Passing through Samaria was not my choice, but it was the journey that was necessary. You know how we ask the question, why me, Lord? But I heard the Holy Spirit gently say, you must walk this journey. You must take one step at a time. But I promise I will be with you through the journey. This would begin my faith journey. I too would have to drink the bitter waters of my Mara as I pass through my wilderness. I had to make choices. I had to trust and to believe God. I said to my father, Father, I choose life. I decided that I would live to raise my own children. I decided I would fight the good fight of faith. It was my family, my faith family, the intercessors, the blessings of having family, the blessings of having people who love you and pray for you. Somebody prayed for me. You know the old song, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me. And people prayed, interceded, stood in the gap for me as I shared my heart and as I shared in different intervals of my journey, they took the time to pray for me. My prayer warrior mama, Mama Maybell Mitchell, my sisters, Marion, my sister Peaches, Maddie Pearl Dawson, my sister Betty and Kathy, my brother Marvin, my nieces and nephews, they stood in the gap. What an awesome array of family standing together and standing in the gap pleading over my life, uh, continuously standing in the gap for me. The prayers of the righteous indeed availeth much. My amazing husband truly walked out his vows. He had to walk him out that time in sickness and in health. He was there every Friday that I went through chemo, holding my hands and whispering words of encouragement. No one could ever take his place. His strength became my strength, 
as we pray together. I would learn to live day by day. And I would learn to value the blessings that God had given me in my family, in my husband, in my children. So while some women perhaps were wondering if I would survive, I smiled in their face and I'm going to raise my own children. No one else will raise my sons. So I heard many of my mentors, those that stood in the gap for me. One of my mentors, she said, Judy, let nothing speak louder than Jesus. Let nothing speak louder than Jesus. In any battle, there has to be a combat strategy, and combat is required when you're fighting the good fight of faith, to trust and to believe, to stand on the word of God. So I learned more about trusting God. I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in God. Judy, don't let nothing speak louder than Jesus. Don't let your pain speak louder than Jesus. Jesus is the great physician. He is our light and the length of our days. So God taught me. He taught me to stand on his word, to stand on his truth. He is the final authority. When I was Fearful or afraid, he said, fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will help thee, and I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. When I felt like giving up, he'd say, hold on just a little while longer. Hold on. He taught me to stand on his word. He was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities, and the chastisement for my peace of mind was upon him. And by his stripes, I am healed. I learned to trust in Jesus. Over 35 years ago, when they spoke the diagnosis, carcinoma, 70-30, possible chance for your survival. So I learned what is truth. There was one time that I was questioning God and I was talking to the Lord concerning my condition. I'd gone through various stages, you know, after the first year, you know, and they give you a clean report, five years were done. I mean, after several other years, they would find something here or there. There was another review to see, is there another uh, uh, episode of cancer appearing? And God was faithful to me. Oh, it was Jesus. Oh, it was Jesus. It was Jesus in my soul when I touched the hem of his garment. Then I was made whole. So I had some good days. I had some bad days. I had some hills to climb. I had some weary days. I had some lonely and sometimes some sleepless, teary nights. But when I looked around and I think things over now, all of my good days outweigh my bad days and I won't complain. The question that I asked Father God, when I asked Father God of some of the things that I was going through, the answer that he gave me was a question. And he said, what is truth? And I said, Father, thy word is truth. And I stood on that word, stood on that truth, and I continued to stand on that truth. 35 years later, because God has been faithful to me. If you've just started your journey, stand on the word of truth. Know that God will keep you and will sustain you. That God is the greatest physician, though we value the blessings of those in the profession, those who have done the research, though we value all that God has given them, the wisdom, and all that God has shared with them. I thank God that the great physician took over my case 
and I stand before you today, 35 years later, declaring that the word of God is truth. I yet praise God after 35 years of follow-ups and negative mammograms and some retests and retests, but God is faithful. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, my Father. There is no shadow of turning in thee. Thou changes not, and thou compassion they fail not. As thou hast been, thou evermore shall be. So I stand on the word of God. I encourage you today, every one of you, if you just started the journey, then take that journey in faith, in, in God. Know that God will keep you, that God will go with you every step of the way. Follow even the directions, the things that God gives you to do, the things that your doctors advise you. I made some changes in my lifestyle during that time. I put down some things that I, I, I thought that I could not live without. I began to do some, you know, it was, it was the, the angels that helped me to walk around the track when I needed to exercise and when I needed to make sure that I took my vitamins and when I did those things that I knew that were necessary to help to sustain my health. So I thank God tonight because my sequel to Bitter Waters will be redemptive survival because I did not survive just for me. From Mara to Elam, which will eventually inc include some of the greater testimonies over the years of laughter, the, the tears, the scars, the pain, the struggles and pain that, I, that I, I have gone through as I seek to impact the lives of other women. My goal is to help somebody else. If I can help somebody along the way, then my living shall not be in vain. I did not survive for myself only, but my survival was redemptive. Peak survivors all over the land. Peak survivors for each of them. I survived for you. I survived that I could tell you that you can make it, that you can come through this with victory. The survival is redemptive for others are waiting on you to share your testimony of how you made it through. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, many survivors will survive after me. Because my survival is redemptive. God bless and keep you in Jesus' name. Tonight, we give you thanks for all who serve in our healthcare systems. We remember particularly those who administer and operate our healthcare facilities. For their business skills and abilities, we give thanks. For those who work and serve in laboratories and radiology services, we thank you for their kindness, compassion, and gentle handling of our bodies when our needs are the greatest. For those who work in medical research, bringing new procedures, treatments, and medications to compete in our fight for life and health. Lord, we are so grateful. For doctors and nurses working in hospitals, clinics, and public health who bring their healing skills to work on our behalf. Gracious God, we are thankful. For dietitians and nutritionists who strive to find sustaining nourishment when our bodies reject taste and smell. Lord, we are thankful. For housekeepers, engineers, porters, technicians, and the army of workers who help keep our institutions functioning. We are humbled and thankful for their commitment. For spouses, family, friends who take on new roles as caregiver. We are thankful for their devotion. For our church families and spiritual leaders who pray for us when we are unable to pray for ourselves. Gracious Lord and loving shepherd, we are grateful for the prayer warriors in our lives. Lord, we would remember all those who offer themselves to participate in clinical trials. By their courage, we find new paths to hope and healing. Thank you, Lord, for their courage and faith. 
Lord, you have heard our prayers of thanks, and so we would ask that you guard and protect those we have named. Give them strength for the tasks before them, joy in using the gifts you have bestowed on them, and peace in the knowledge of their contributions to the battles we fight. Amen. Amen. Hello, I am Pastor Linda Butler, and I humbly introduce myself as founder of Pray for the Cure in Peoria, Bloomington, and Springfield. Hopefully throughout the nation someday and thereafter around the world. I am very excited to encourage those of you who are watching this Pray for the Cure as you take on your journey with breast cancer or as you continue the journey. It was 20 years ago when I heard the word cancer. The immediate comfort and hope came in the statement of caught it at the right time. In the words of the radiologist, Dr. Jessica Gingrich, she said, someone was looking out for you. That someone continues to look out for me by evidence of my presence here this evening. Pray for the Cure was founded after an exploration of spiritual care for breast cancer patients. I was a chaplain resident when I was blessed to work on a pastoral project caring for 18 breast cancer patients pre and post surgical for 12 weeks. It was encouraging to explore the role of faith in a crisis illness, an illness that requires a commitment to hope supported by courage, and strengthened by faith and family. Pray for the Cure includes and extends our hope for the healing of body, soul, and mind. Here is my encouragement to breast cancer survivors and thrivers. Praise God that in the last 10 years, the overall cancer death rate has continued to decline Researchers in the U.S. and across the world have made major advances in learning more complex details about how to prevent, diagnose, treat, and survive cancer. At the forefront of emerging cancer research is the success of immunotherapy, the growing role of precision medicine, the influence that reducing health disparities can have on cancer outcomes and the development and the use of liquid biopsies and machine learning, which is allowing scientists to make sense of the big data. But even greater than the science, which we are grateful for, tonight and beyond, you have the opportunity to have your soul encouraged. Emotional and spiritual care can have a positive effect on the wellness of our body and offer the opportunity to reestablish purpose for continuous living. Remember that we survivors and thrivers take a misfortune of life and change it into something that produces personal growth. In 2002 and 2003, the Journal Star newspaper in Peoria published articles on my breast cancer experience. Each article mentions cancer was my blessing. People find that very hard to believe. That is, to feel blessed when you've been diagnosed with breast cancer? Yes. And so I pray tonight that God will give you new insight into what it is for you to survive and thrive during and after your illness. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the encouragement that you give us as we look at life-threatening and crisis in our lives. We thank you, O oh God, tonight that we are joined together by your spirit to seek your face, your power, your divine healing. That, O oh God, is encouragement to our souls. So we are grateful for that gift, the gift that now we lift up before your throne of grace with confidence knowing that you can and you will help us to be not only survivors, but thrivers of breast cancer. 
This I pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. This prayer event has always provided an opportunity to remember persons who have completed their journey with breast cancer. You, tonight, may speak out loud and name or give the name of the persons you remember. You may also, in your heart, welcome the sadness and gladness as you think about it. We thank God for them. 